No, pues qué buena oferta, qué bárbaros. Ay, Ay ahí que estoy. Su madre, vámonos. Ahí estoy. Damn. I feel like I'm, I'm listening to the radio right now. I know, that's what it feels like. Huh? Should, go ahead, do the intro for us. We're... You, you want me to? <clears throat> Hi, question. Ah, just, ah. <laughs> just kidding. Man, it, uh, now I think I can use my deep voice on this podcast, on this episode. Do you make it? You change your voice or what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to change mine today. <laughs> hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome back to A Toast to Life. This is the first time I sound like this. Oh. I'm, just I'm just kidding. Now all you have to do is uh, do a commercial for that. Just oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Action. The camera's right there. Okay, go. Rain. Total body feel. Go buy it. <laughs> okay, that was good. But can I give you some advice? Please, please, okay. please. Wait, so, give us an example with your juice. I know. Okay, so Camera's for example, right uh, but I could do anything. I know my juice, right? I don't know this, but let me see, right? All right. And, oh, yeah, and shout out to Rain. Don't use this because I'll sue. Uh, just <laughs> kidding. Are you tired? Do you need some energy? I need you to go pick up some Rain. It is going to give you the energy that you need and make you feel good without getting that crash later on. Rain, feel body. Right? Like, just, oh, like, the, just oh, kind of like. She's scripted that. Right she's scripted that. It's okay. So you have to sell it to me. You know what I mean? Okay, like. Okay. Sell it to me. Dime why I need it. Just oh, wow. taking and, notes. And then the tip is just ask the question first. It's also like podcast, baby. <laughs> Most organic podcast out here. Let's go. We are back with another amazing episode. I'm joined by my amazing best friend, Mr. Pepe in the house. Thank you for sitting in on this one. Best friend. Gotta let it be known. My other best friends in here, don't get jealous. You guys are my best friends also. They're already walking you out. You guys are all best friends? Mandatory. Oh, that's awesome. If we're not friends, then we can't all be here. Okay. Were you guys friends before you guys started shooting this? Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, yes. Okay. Blessfully, this. How long have you guys been doing the show? Uh, I've been doing the show completely now three years and I together together shit maybe three three ish months yeah three four ish months but they they've you, been you still like him no he's an acquired taste <laughs> <laughs> he's an acquired taste like the juice hey no that's a good juice that's hey, a good juice you have to be in the mood for it <laughs> that's right you gotta crave that juice <laughs> for, for the people already listening in and watching already so far we are if you guys recognize the voice this is not a normal voice this is a very talented voice this is a very impactful voice everybody has heard her on Cali 93.9 she has many titles mm. she's a friend she's an entrepreneur she's a creator she's a radio host and a wife and most importantly she's a mother we are in the presence of melissa rios in the house baby hello muchachos thank you so much for having me i appreciate it it's a long time coming no, you know, I don't know. I don't really get invited to places. You know, I'm going to be very honest with you. The first time I I knew I wanted you on the podcast, this was when I entered LA about almost a year and a half ago, is when you came out at South Made with Jason. Mm -hmm. I seen you on that podcast, and I listened to it, and I thought it was very amazing. The way you carried yourself, the way you spoke. And I was like, one day I'm going to have her on the podcast. Oh, thank you. And... Yeah, here you are. Like here we later. are. Like Manifestation. Look at that. Look yeah. at that. The world goes the world goes around for sure. Yeah. I think the circle in the industry it's very hard to find very kind souls, very pure souls. And I can tell and I know that you're one of them. So oh, thank you. Cheese. Tomen foto por favor. Ese momento es cuando I'm just kidding. Uh, no. no, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um yeah, I'm just happy to be here. I've been invited. I, I think, uh, you know, Jason from Self Made Family. Um, and so I do get invited with family places, con personas que conozco, amigos. But it's um, other places. Like you guys, we don't really know each other. We've ran into each other a couple of times. And so I don't really get invited places. I don't know if it's because it seems like I'm on like a little unreachable. Unreachable. Or bit. maybe I don't seem approachable. Oh. Or because I do not get invited. I'm when I was single, I wouldn't get hit on, <laughs> which is weird. I, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying que I, you know, but <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, my friends, we would all be together. Literally, they would come to the table and they would all get hit on except me. 
And I was like, what's wrong with me? I'm like, am I the problem? Am, am I, I the problem? Nadie me echa los perros, <laughs> and, um, and so then it, it, it now in the industry, it kind of turned into like, I don't get invited places, which is so weird to me. I'm like, I'm like the nicest person ever. Not that I want to get invited. No, no. me then. Me vale que son, nah. um, but um, for you guys to reach out and to invite me was a big deal to me because I was like, oh, thanks. I want to go. And, and we Thank have you. a podcast also. Shout out to Palacaya Podcast. And I want to invite people over. I want them to come. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that that'll be the beginning of, you know, more intertwined. Yeah. You know, Do you think it's something that you kind of have to get used to and be open to? Obviously, meeting new people it takes a lot of energy. But la gente que no cree que you put all of your energy into your episodes of the podcast or even your your moments on the radio, like, hey, this takes a lot of our energy because I'm going to give you everything. All of me right now for the next hour and a half. Once I'm done, like, my whole, like, casi no tengo nada. Pero it's like energy, giving the energy to somebody is very sacred because I don't know your intentions until after we're done having a conversation or conviviendo. Obviously, when you're around an environment with a lot of people, well, you don't know who are the sharks out there. You don't know who's just yeah. there to use you for who you are, what you have, what you bring. So it's like being very particular on who we allow to have around us. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm a hugger. <laughs> like, that's Después how. Is it COVID? Sí, sí. Todavía. 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 Even more so now. Even more like, now. Damn, you're alive. My, uh, yeah. my <laughs> thing is. Can hug. And My thing is is energy. Like for you, how do you how do you know how do you know someone's energy? Like before even having a conversation, um, I you could just feel it. Mm. I think sometimes, and because even like you said, like the sharks or things like that, um, people are really good. People are really good at pretending to be. I mean, I had a whole friendship for like ten years with someone, and I thought it was very genuine. Um, but it's because you see what you want. Right? Like, you really see what you want in the person. Oh, yeah. he's hardworking. El echa ganas. He's inspirational. Or I can see it in the way of, oh, he's always at work. He doesn't pay attention, you know, to his family. And, oh, he's inspiration. He's fake. You know? Yeah. Like, there, there's... It could be the right story. It could be the same story. But it, de it depends on how you look at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I think that I my flaw is I always try to see the best in people. So even if I meet you and I'm like, mm, your energy is off or whatnot, I just give the benefit of the doubt because I don't know if you're going through something that day. It, it has nothing to do with me. Your energy has nothing to do with me. Maybe you're just tired. Maybe someone passed away. Maybe you just finished driving two hours in LA traffic and that's draining. So I don't take it personal. Even when I meet someone and they have off energy, it has nothing to do with me. And then when I find out it might, I'm like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> which has happened. Yeah. You know, I've met people in Manicho Ojo and I go home feeling like, oh my gosh, because I let them in my space. You know, like in that instant, she literally like grabbed my hair and hugged me and was talking to me. And when I left that interaction, I was so drained and I had a headache and I thought I was going to throw up and I just didn't feel good. And it was again, I energy was there, but I I'm just open that way to everyone. And I think it's the radio's fault because I have to be open to everyone. If someone comes to me in the street, I can't be like, your energy is off. Or I can't pick and choose when I turn on or turn off. Yeah. The, the podcast you said is draining. I do this every day. Yeah. I wake up and I go to work every single day. I'm on every day. You, and if I'm in the street. You give yourself to the world, the audience, every day. Every day. So it's it's not like um, not like we've always talked about, like there's now in the times that we're in, it's like, oh, I'm going to pick and choose when I want to have it on. It's like when you're in, a, in an environment scenario, that we're in, it's like, you can't really do that because, like you said, someone sees you on the street and you don't have that same energy or don't give them that same interaction, what's the one thing that, man, that fool's fake. Yeah. Oh, she's oh, fake. Oh, they're stuck up. The neck, There's no the grace. Camera. Yeah, and we, I, we've we been, a, unfortunately, we've seen that side of some people. Yeah. And it's like, wow, you really like that? Yeah, and, and, and see, my job, the way I take it is I'm like, mm, they were probably having a bad day. Like, I've offered grace to people because I could have met him, and he wow. looks really inspirational online, and then the day I met him, he's like, give me that taco. 
We met each other hey, at the taco spot. Taco spot. Hey, <laughs> don't burn it out. Hey, don't burn I, I it out, bro. We're not going to say where we're we were. All I'm going to say is, you look completely different from that hey, event. Don't do that. Hey. Don't do that. I can go there. I can go there. Um, yeah, we were at an event. Real, put a pin on that. We were at an event, and I'm wearing heels, and my hair's done, and everything. And as soon as I walk out of the event, I start pulling extensions out, taking off my eyelashes, <laughs> you know, clipping off my my press ons and put my UGG boots on and we see each other right within an hour yeah. at the yeah. taco place and I'm in sweats and UGG boots. My eyelashes are off. He's like, what happened? I was like, <laughs> no, Lisa was like, hey, Melissa's here. I'm like, who? Where? Where? <laughs> Where's she at? Where's she at? Right the one there. with the I'm red like, dress at the nah, event. She's wearing a red dress though. <laughs> she's over here like oversized hoodie, when, the biggest. We go say ever. hi. We're like, hey, how are you? Huh? Uh, Mid taco. Why are you guys here? <laughs> No, but you know, I have met a lot of people in the industry and they are completely different than what they portray to be or whatnot. Yeah. But I don't take it again personal because wow. it can be a persona, maybe um they're having a bad day. Maybe yeah. they're having a fucking rough year. It has nothing I've just learned it has nothing to do with me and I just don't take them pers it take it personal yeah. and I offer them grace. To take it a, a little bit back because again, your energy, the way the way you speak, the way you're talking, it sounds like you did a lot of healing. And it yeah. sounds like you've had a lot of experiences where you you had to learn some tough tough lessons. Yeah. So this outspoken, this confident, this great energy human being was this always you growing up or when growing up what kind who was melissa who was that person well i've always been outspoken mm. i've always been yeah. i've always had a very strong personality um i've always been very willful like if i want something i know that it's gonna happen because i want to do it yeah. um i think the kindness part got lost a little while just because of my life experiences you know you're growing up um i became a single mom at a very young age i had to figure it out so life automatically makes you a, a bit of a hard ass and then you go into the entertainment industry and then that wow. sprinkles on a little bit more of like yeah. i need to be more stern i need to be tougher i need to be stronger and not let you know things get to me mm. um and so yeah a lot of Therapy, a lot of life coaches, a lot of um, weeding things out, weeding people out, um, and then just setting boundaries. I'm really big on, like, boundaries and, you know, those around me. I don't tolerate certain things, and if you make me feel a certain way or you say something to me, I offer you grace, but then I let you go because you're just not for me. I just don't. I don't even interact with a lot of things. So I am a bit of a, maybe por eso no me invitan, porque, you know, I'm like, but. Gonna, yeah, you're going to cut them off right I, away. I, like, I okay. do, I just don't interact. The other day, somebody told me, they said something about someone. And then they said, I'm not going to, you know what? I'm not even going to continue talking about it because I know you're not going to entertain it. And that to me was like, um, was an halago. Like, I actually felt good about that. Because I don't, I don't want to gossip about someone. Yeah. I, I don't, it has nothing to do with me. Um, even if it does, it's none of my business. You have something to say, you go tell them. Or go talk to someone who likes el chisme. Yeah. It's just not for me. It lowers my vibration. <laughs> so wow. um, they, they stop themselves. Where this person likes to gossip, they just weren't going to gossip with me. And I appreciate that. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you when you had your first baby? I was 19 when I got pregnant. And then I was 20 when I had him. Yeah, my first son. He's 13 now. 19. My big boy. And 19, and that's the same year you were going into an, the entertainment industry, right? You know what? I actually, um, I so I had been working since I was 15. And my mom and my dad gave me a car when I was 15. Because I yo era trabajadora. No me gustaba andar en la calle, but I needed a car to get back to work. So I never really played sports in school. I would just go straight to work, back home, do my homework. Then at 18, I started hanging out with my friends. And we just started, we started going wild. <laughs> we started trying things. We started going now, blah, blah, blah. And I remember I went to community college, maybe a semester. And I told my mom and dad, I sat them down and I was like, I don't want to work anymore. Like, I've been working since I was 15. I'm going to have to work for the rest of my life. Yeah. I just kind of, 
kind of want to enjoy life a little bit and figure it out, figure out what I want to do. Yeah. My mom's like, okay. My dad's like, all right. Within months, I was like, I want to do radio. I want to do television. I signed up for a radio school. I probably went twice and then I got pregnant. And I was like, holy shit. Like, what am I going to do? And my mom's like, well, you can't stay here. You know, you, you got to go live with el novio. You wanted a family. Pues váyase. So I remember I would cry every night because I wanted to go home. And he's like, this is your home now. And I'm like, no. You know, I was like 19. I yeah. didn't want to. I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And then I was like, well, I can't do radio anymore. And I can't be on TV because who's going to want to do business with a pregnant girl? Mm. And that's where, like, my image of who I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to look like, I started creating her. And nobody was going to want to do business with a pregnant girl. So I stopped going to radio school. Um, I had my son, uh, when I was trying to do radio school, I applied everywhere. I went to like clear channel, which used to be kiss FM. I heart. Mm -hmm. They, they were clear channel before I went to like when I went everywhere and started applying okay. just whatever position they had, because I wanted to be in radio. I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Okay. Then I got pregnant and then I gave up on it. I was like, absolutely not. I went to get classes to do taxes. I learned how to do that. I went to do makeup classes. I was like, I'm just going to do girls makeup for events, blah, blah, blah. And then I became a, um, a, uh, you know where you go to the agencies to apply for work? Yeah. And um, so I became a recruiter. So people would go and they would fill out the application. I'd be like, do you have steel toe boots? <laughs> would you pass a drug test? Uh, do you know how to do this, this and that? Yeah. And I went from receptionist to a recruiter. And I was making good money. I got a new car, my 2012 Honda. By the way, it's parked outside. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I just, you know, I started moving up and I was like, all right, I'm a office girly. Huh? Office girly and... One day, randomly, I got a call, and they were like, hi, we're calling you from Clear Channel. Um, we are looking for street team um, promotions or openings, and we see that you have a application here. It was like three years later. What the hell? Damn. That's crazy. Three years later, three and a half years maybe, because my son wasn't even born. I was 19. He was one and a half, two. So, yeah, about three years later. Wow. And they're like, so are you open to come and do an interview? And I remember I was sitting in my cubicle and I was like, yeah, I'm open, but I can only do weekends because I have a nine to five and I just bought my car. There's no way yeah. that I can quit my full time job. I have a baby. I'm a single mom sleeping on my mom's couch. You know, yeah. um, d I just had got that cool job. There was a time where I didn't have money. I had to cook rice water for my son. Porque no tenía dinero para darle de comer. You know, like I was struggling in McDonald's. Me querían. Una pinche mala racha de que mamá would tell me, ve, bañate con azúcar. I went to a job interview. I got pulled over and I got a ticket on my way to the job interview. I had to borrow mm -hmm. a car. Like, it was wow. just bad shit after bad shit, like, just happening to me. So this, they finally called me and I'm like, <laughs> I can't quit my job. I just got here. Like, apenas things are looking up for me. I got a new car. I got a good job. Like, the, the dream job that I wanted it, and I can't security. really. Security. Yeah. That I can't really get because I need to do this to maintain what I have right now. How am I going to? Yeah. And I told them, I can only do weekends. And they were like, no, we need uh, flexibility. And I remember I was like, okay, well, thanks. Me colgaron. Seguí trabajando. And at that moment, that was the day that I was like, Diosito had them call me. How did they find my, my application? Three, Three years, years later? later? That's crazy. Three years later, and it wasn't a, a written application. It was online. Yeah. You know how many people apply? O sea, to me, it was like, okay, that was Diosito. So then I put my two-week notice in, and then I went back to radio school, and I went and started going to events, going and networking and meeting the DJ, and do you work in radio? Yeah, oh, let me have your business card. Can do, Are they hiring? And I just started going, networking, networking, going to different places, and eventually, yeah, I got my, I got on promotions. I started going to school. And it was really rough time, too. 
I had $20 and I had to choose putting gas or eating. And, you know, I had a son and those were rough times. I couldn't have done it without my mom and my dad and my family. But I was like, Diosito me, you know, brought this whole idea back because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And yeah, I quit my full-time job. And then I went to go work part-time at the radio station and I went back to radio school. And wow. and that's how I how I got, you know, into it. But I've always been strong-willed and I don't think that I would be back 30, 30 minutes later to your question. I don't think that I would be where I'm at if I wasn't strong-willed and determined. And I've always been determined. Um, but I've had a rough, you know, um, with being a single mom and in the industry. So I think that the place where I'm at now of peace and just kind of not taking things so personal is because I feel like everybody has their own journey and everyone's dealing with different things and has nothing to do with me. Man, shout out to you because talk about perseverance. Talk about not becoming a victim of just life. Like, you know, being a parent is is hard. Being a single parent and trying to figure their whole career out hard. and even <laughs> harder. harder. Man, because th those are things that, again, we see this smile. We see this energy. We hear the voice on the radio. People are like, I want to be like her. But then you get to a point where it's like, wait, do you really want to know what I had to go through to get to here? Yeah. Because in order for all of us to sit here, we don't know the, the battles everybody's facing or what they had to go through just to get here, smile, put, put on a, a good energy. But, yeah, they may go home and they may be fighting a war within themselves that, they don't even speak about. Right. You went through a whole. I, I love what you said at the beginning where it was. Then yet, pura, pura mala suerte. Anywhere I tried to turn, oh. it was no, no, not for you. So my question to you is being a single mother, trying to figure out life. What got you through it? What made you say, fuck this? I am not going to be a victim of. Diosito. I can't, that's it, God. He's the only one. There was. There are things that have happened in my life that are, no te lo puedo explicar, and I don't try to. I just, I'm like, oh, that was God. Like, I believe I'm highly favored. Diosito's never failed me. Even when he tells me no, it's a yes. He's like, not right now, not that. And it's happened to me numerous times. I'm like, God, I really want this. God, I really want this. I can tell you oh, how many things I would. God, give me this. Please give me this. My relationship. I was like, Diosito, please. I don't want to. I don't want to be a single mom. I don't want to have a child without a dad. I don't want to do that to a human. I really want this to work out. Look at me now. Happily married. I have my children. I have my everything I ever wanted. I really thought that's what I wanted. I just didn't see the big picture. When God did. Yeah. And so even he told me no, it was a yes to something else. Yeah. You know? Um, and he's just done that for me millions of times with opportunities. Just recently, I was like, God, I really want this opportunity. There was paperwork involved. There was money being talked about. It was, it was happening. Yeah. And for some reason, it didn't go through. One thing after another, it just it didn't happen. And then three months later, something bigger than that happened to the place that I was supposed to go to or the thing that I was supposed to do. And I was like, oh, my God, that would have been me. That's why it didn't happen. That's why it didn't happen. It's so crazy when uh, Genesis, shout out to her, um, she has sent me a video and it's the elite have a language, right? The rich people have a language. The people that are. At the top of the top of the world right now, running social media, running their business, there's a language that they speak. And the one thing that they always talk about and always give thanks to is the man above. And it's I I know right now I may not understand why you're doing this, why this is happening, why it's me, but I'm gonna give my full trust to you because you know what I'm destined for. You like my my book of life has already been written. I'm just now living through the chapters and I have to understand every chapter why this happened. We went through it all already that we needed to so far. And that is why we didn't have to go through that. That's why we didn't go there. That's why this didn't happen to us. 
because we weren't ready yet. Right. Right? Like, right now we want the glitz, the glamour, the money, the opportunities. You're going to get it. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to receive everything? Right. And so Diosito gives it to you at the time that you deserve it, that you need it, and that you're going to use it wisely. And he he sends vessels for you Mm -hmm. to remind you. Yeah. Right? Uh, We were, I think, went to Best Buy just the other day. I was just talking to him. And it's so crazy because uh, mi abuelito cumplió tres años que falleció. So it, it, it was a it was a it was a tough day. It was very slow day. It was a slow day, and I went to Best Buy, and we were just I was walking around like wasting time. Like I was trying to find things didn't work out, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go find a cable that I need. And me dice pendejo, ¿pa qué digo? Me dice pendejo, and a couple comes up to me. And he was like, yo, you're the guy from the podcast. And I was like, yeah, how you doing? I'm doing good, bro. He's like, hey, I just want to tell you thank you so much for the things that you talk about. Like, I've gone through my depression, my anxiety. Uh, my wife here knows everything. And, man, I just want to really tell you what you're doing has really helped me. So I was telling Pepe, I was like, because he asked me, like, oh, how are you doing? I was like, you know what, not too good today, but it's okay. And I was like, he sent me someone to remind me how good things are going right now and to be appreciated and be grateful for. And that's one of the things now it's like, I can't, I'm not mad at the situation, the things that never happened to us or never happened to me or the things that we didn't get. It's okay. Oh, well, you got to go here, bro. Like it's, it's not for me right now. Y aunque no venga. Aunque no venga. Y aunque no venga, yeah. o sea, tú vas a estar bien or you need to be okay. When I say that I had that mala racha, mm-hmm. That was self-inflicted. I believe now where I am at now, Yeah. I believe that it was my negativity. Whatever you say, the energy brings, the, the universe gives it back to you. You attract. Right? Diosito, the, you know, it's, it's all aligned. Entonces, when it was poor me, oh, yo estoy salada. Oh, my God, all these bad things are happening to me. Oh, my God, I cannot get a job. The universe is like, you can't get a job? You want more. You can't get a job. You can't. I was just in this very dark place rightfully so i yeah. understand i'm not hard on myself i've when i look back i'm like poor little melissa yeah. she had no fucking idea she was just trying to survive yeah love that um oh but it, it always well, gives he, he yeah. knows entonces en vez de estar hablando, you're like, Ay, se apagó. we're like hey yeah. no porque si ha sucedido because one of the i'm one of those people that yeah i'll learn on on online and stuff but i'm one of those very hard-headed with like Voy a aprender por mí mismo. And, and it's happened. And it's happened. And yeah. it, it's some of the, it's so crazy because, again, tying into everything we're talking about, it's some of those things where it's like the camera messed up or the audio was messed up. And it's one of those things where you're like, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. Sometimes that's why I'm like, I'm not going to do it. And then I'm like, wait. Yeah. I have to do it. Like, I think we had recorded the first time we recorded at the house with everybody. Everything was plugged in. All the levels were good. The cameras were good perfect and then uh two days later when i was gonna decide to edit i'm just looking through the audio i'm like ah. it's not there and they were like yo did we press? i was like yo i know we pressed it like the other two parts are there and again i'm one of those not i don't make an excuse no matter what happens no matter situation no matter how the day is going if it's sunny outside raining tormenta ciclone no me vale i have to do my part and i got to show up Cause oh well you guys you guys doing so good well yeah bro our consistency yeah we don't miss we just literally seen each other probably ten hours ago we were recording last night at the house and again it's these are priorities we in order for us to receive all the gifts that we want we need to put in our work yeah so but, what happened you didn't find the audio y qué pasó you guys had to reshoot yeah I just we found <laughs> another one well we had a <laughs> backup. <laughs> like for for you and your podcast, do you guys go week by week or do you are you ahead okay. of weeks? Now we go week by week. I think it's the radio in me. Mm. Um, to us, every day is different. Every day is new. Yeah, kind of so take us through that because it's hard. <laughs> no, I I want to get out of that mm. because it's really hard to. For me, when I say something, yeah. it's happening now live. Yeah, the next day that's old. Oh. Where in the internet. I mean, it's evergreen. A month later, you're still talking about it, yeah. and it's not. Where me, I come from the radio world, and I'm like, that's old. Yeah. Yo ya vi eso. 
That's, Yo, yeah. and that's 24 hours ago. Go on to the next thing. That was 24 yeah, hours ago. We don't repeat. We don't. And so to us, if I could, I would do it the day before. So is it an adjustment to you how the whole... So don't do what I do because <laughs> I'm trying to do a week, book two weeks and three. That's the way smart people work, you know, in advance. Mm. And you use all your time and wisely and you rack yeah. up and... Oh, pues no se puede esta semana, pues tenemos este y este y el otro. Así debe de ser yeah. for the podcast world. But because I live in radio land, I'm like, why are we going to talk about that? That was last week. Mm. They're like, it's okay. It's still happening. Okay, so how do you, how now seeing the way internet podcasts work? Work, because correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot of people that say podcast is a new radio. No, so, sorry. It's not. Okay, Absolutely so, so give, not. So give us, different? How is it different? Yeah, please How give us different? that difference. I think podcasts are, they're very different. Podcasts, they're long. You can talk. You can really say what you want. You can say how you want it, how long. Yeah. Um, at your leisure. Like, you guys have your own company. So you can give your opinion and you can, you're not owned. It's a very free range, free right. space. It's. It's great. I love podcasting. Um, but it can't be the new radio because radio was meant for if there is a tragedy, you turn on the radio or you turn on television. Noticias. Right. For the now. Yeah. Radio is right now. And I can tell you what's happening right now. I can't get into it <laughs> as much as I want yeah. to, right? In yeah, a yeah, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, but radio is not. You, you, podcast can't be radio radio is right now what's happening it's local radio is like um hey there's a pothole right on the 210 there was a chase and you know agarraron al muchacho and the 210 is backed up for three hours and imagine listening to that a whole week later imagine <laughs> listening, hey do you remember the 210 and and you can right well, yeah, dude, I was in the car for two hours so I ended up doing this and then you get into the conversation yeah. do you think what what do you think the demographic is listening to the radio? Oh, obviously it's older mm. and people who are driving. Um, we're obviously old. Sorry, guys, we're driving, <laughs> but we're driving. Um, we're driving. <laughs> he's passenger. He's he's a passenger princess with me. Are passenger you prince? I was a passenger no princess today. Not the Not quite good today. Oh, I was like, nauseous. big time. If we're going anywhere, I'm driving. Even your car, your car. I'm like, I'll drive. I, that's why I love driving because I'm the same way. I can't. Unless I'm like, I'm really, really sleepy, I'll fall yeah. asleep. But if mm -mm. not, then I'm like, oh, I got to change. Just the thought of it makes me nauseous. Oh, no, I can't. It's a green juice. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Y luego me pega ansias no. como manejan otra gente. Sí, ahí andas así, like. <laughs> You're pressing the brake on your own. stressed out. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's me. It's, I can't, I can't like, be passenger. It's like your, when your mom's riding uh, passenger princess and you're driving a little too fast. And, hey, párale, párale, párale. And she, she's braking. She's yeah. braking. No, my mom pulls my hair. Like, she'll be like, hasta pa' allá. I'm like, mom, Boom. do you know how dangerous that is? For you to, like, no le hagas así. Oh, my God. You over here turning? Oh, shit. Yeah, my mom, and she'll be like, que no, vete pa' allá. Or I'm like, mom, why are you so aggressive? I don't know if it's a Latina thing, but she's just always yelling. It's a Latina thing. Uh, yeah, she's always yelling, and I think I talk like that, too. My, but mom, my mom's nervous. That's so why every, every time I drive, she's like, Eduardo, slow down. Slow down. I'm like, mom, not even at, I'm not even at the speed limit right now. What are you talking? You're getting too close. You're getting too close. I'm like... Usted calma. <laughs> yeah. Yo nervioso, usted calma. Vamos a llegar. Well, it's your mom listening to the radio. It's us sometimes that we go in to hear la plática or the conversaciones, you know, yeah. on radio or the vibe. But I think it definitely, the the the, the people listening changed. Yeah. They definitely changed with COVID. A lot of it changed also. Morning so drive used to be the most important um, time yeah. in radio. Now, it's not. It's kind of like, oh, now it's debatable. Now it's the afternoon, maybe. Yeah, a lot of people pivoted, right? Like Their they schedules. Yeah, they, a lot of, I still know a lot of people that work from home or they have, they maybe go maybe once or twice to the, to the office or wherever they're going. But also what changed was the way social media goes. Yes. How fast it is. TikTok, I think at the time also, what was it Vine at the beginning? 
Twitter is obviously it's always for the cheese miss too. But the the way Instagram works too is you can. I don't know if it's happened to you or it probably has, but Pepe will post a, a picture or a video and I won't see that pop up until like two weeks later. Yeah. He's like, that's crazy. You're really liking it. And I was like, dude, I'd never seen <laughs> Your it. Your best friend's not liking your <laughs> like pictures? Fake friend, fake that's friends. weird. No, it's, even weirder when, it's even weirder when you send it to them. Yeah. The, the second it comes out and then they send it to you two weeks later, I'm like, hey, bro, I sent you Did that Did you not read that post? So that's how it is? No, it's it's really different. I've had to adapt to it. I I... Things are definitely changing. Um, I would say that I'm very lucky. I'm very glad that I'm on that wave of social media. There are a lot of, um, most of the people in the radio industry are older. Mm-hmm. Tengo contadita las personas that are younger trying to get into it because everyone's doing podcasts, social media. Everyone's yeah. on, they're thinking ahead. Yeah. Um, entonces, I, right when I started doing radio, I knew how important social media was. I think that's how I got all of my jobs. To be honest, there's a lot of people that I know that are still 10 years later doing the shift that I started with. They're still still trying to figure it out. Do you think that also has to, it comes with que quieren ellos en la vida? Or like getting out of the normal routine? It's really hard. Yeah, to get out of a routine that you've been so used to for the last two, three years, even a year. Wow, well, I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't, Getting mm. stagnant is mm. a real big thing, just like you do with a regular 9 to 5. Correct. The radio is my 9 to 5. You yeah. get comfortable, um, and it's hard to get out of so hard, So hard to just go and do something, to go network. Yeah. I mean, I said earlier, Ay, nadie me invita, pero go show up. Sí, sabes cómo pongo, ¿para sí, qué yeah. me invitan? Show up, Melissa, <laughs> right? To, like, yeah. I have to yeah. show up, just like I did at the beginning of, yeah. my, of my journey, and that's how I got the opportunity. Yeah. I have to keep doing it now. It's just, you get stagnant. Yeah. You make excuses. You got three kids. You, you got a life. You know, you're like, oh, a whole juice bar. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is a very important question that that I know you're going to give me the answer or give us the answer that, you know, everybody needs to hear. How do you chase after your dreams being a mother? Having a whole family, how do you how do you stay working and grinding and find that balance. And find that to make balance. make time for everything. Because that's what's hard, right? As a parent. I think yeah. I think it's... I've, I've said this before. I don't think that there is a balance. And whoever tells you that there is a balance is lying. Because you're going to come up short. You're going to come up short in one area or another. Either it's work or it's house or it's cleaning the house or it's cooking <laughs> or it, a birthday party that yeah. you're missing. You're gonna come up short. And this is the whole, oh, I can balance everything. Vas a acabar madreada. Like it it it's an ideal that we thought that we can do it, but we can't. Yeah. And so the way I do it is is my husband. He is heaven sent. My husband was made for me. I, I was made for him. He's older, so <laughs> when God was making me, <laughs> when God was making me, he was like right. grabbed his rib and you know, um, but I really believe it's my family, it's my mom, it's my husband. I really do have, gracias a Dios, I do have a community. They say it takes a village to raise a family. And have. And I have a very, very strong, beautiful, amazing village that helps me out. Y esa idea de balance was out the window a long time ago. So do you ever feel, do you ever feel guilt? Absolutely. Or falling up short? Absolutely. Every day. Yeah. Every day. I mean, my son, uh, my six year old the other day said, Mommy, I'm going to, I know what I'm asking Santa for Christmas. It's January. Christmas just passed. Mateo, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said, What are you going to ask him for? We're ma- I was making food. He's like, I want you to be home for dinner. You broke down. Oh, man. I'm like, that hurts. Mateo, <laughs> I'm home Saturday, Sunday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for dinner. Which to me, my mom was always working. My mom, my mom was gone from 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. Monday through Friday. I only had my mom two days. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, you're so lucky. Yeah. You know, I get to take you to school, and we have four days that I work from home, and you know, we're blessed. And he was like, no. I want you here every day. The so presence. 
So to me, it was like, <sighs> okay, I'm going to go work now. So it's never going to be enough. So yeah, I do feel guilty all the time. I feel guilty for my firstborn. I missed, I wasn't there for his first steps. I didn't teach him his ABCs. Um, you know, I missed a lot of holidays. I was working the overnight shift at the station. I remember a new year, I was like the countdown and I was like, I'm here at the station, putting the pots up, putting in the hours and my baby's at home with my mom. So I think there's always going to be sacrifices in that guilt. I'm always going to carry it, but I've learned with the work that I've done, it's about quality, not quantity. What quality am I giving my children? Because you can have a stay-at-home mom who's stressed out and depressed and is not giving her, the kids the attention, the love, the affection that they need because she's not okay. Yeah. Um, so I've just started to focus on quality time with my children. So I only have four days. So I only have that hour in the morning to take them to school. Okay, we're going to say affirmations and we're going to pray and we're going to have our green juice and we're going to make the best of it. You're going to make it count. I'm going to make it count. Um, porque no puedo, pues, como, ¿qué voy a hacer? Otro no voy a trabajar. Yeah. And I, I like to work. No, I, Así como me ven bonita, soy trabajadora, <laughs> muchachos. No, that, <laughs> and that's very respectful, too, because it's one of those things where as much, as much as one wants to be home, stay home, and be there, like, well, how are you going to keep the lights on? How are you going to, how are you going to feed your kids? My biggest thing is how are you going to give your kids experiences that they want when you're not out there grinding? Now everything takes money. It, it, it's like a, it's a give and take. It's a give and take, right? Money doesn't buy happiness. I get it. I understand. You can have, there's people that are millionaires that are so empty and broken. But it buys a freedom for you to be able to do things with the people you love. Yes. Yeah. But you said earlier, like, you didn't even have enough money to buy a McDonald's. Like, to me now, it's like, oh, I know my kid has 10 of these cars, but look at his smile. Look look how happy he is. Yeah. Una más, pero no rezongue. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's just like, why do you work? Well, I work to provide because I know I need to, but I want to give my kids an experience that when they grow up and they get to tell their friends or their story at one point, they will never say, Man, we had a tough life. We had a hard life. Yeah, my well, kids are very privileged. Yeah. <laughs> They're, <laughs> They're very privileged. Very, very different, right? Like, nunca me faltó nada tampoco con mis papás, pero yo no entendía por qué no estaba mi papá. Right. Oh, you're always working. Mom's always home. Mom's at my games and you're not. Man, I, I don't want to ever be like you. But... But now you know better. But now I understand. Now you know I understand. They were struggling, too. Now I understand. Yeah. You know, now understanding, comprehending, it's like, Dad, man, I'm sorry for everything I did and everything I said. I once heard a quote that said, Uno no es buen hijo hasta que es padre. Wow. It's like, you don't get it. You want to judge your parents for everything they did or what they didn't do and why they were there, why they weren't there, why they treated you, what they said, what they didn't say. You're never going to understand it. Mm. They had to be a parent and a person at the same time. Because there's two different people, the man in you and the dad in you, the woman in you and the mom in you. The woman in you is probably going through a breakup, having a rough day at work because her boss is a jerk, just going through all the struggles that women go through or men, the pressure of life, and yeah. you have to be strong all the time. And then you have to go home and be a parent, yeah. be a dad, be a mom, and be on. It's tough. Yeah. And so I didn't understand my mom until I had my kids, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oh my God! You would never do anything to yeah. hurt me. Yeah, because you know? I mean, again, we we talked about it many times, and and I try to encourage a little bit more with my mom and my dad, asking them, "Hey, Dad, when you were growing up, tenías el amor que no? ¿Cuál? He was like, "The I think they're like ten brothers and sisters. The diez. He was like, "Yo me fui a la yo me fui a la universidad y quién me ayudó? Nadie estaba allá conmigo. Yo trabajaba para mandar dinero." And I'm just like, you know, and, and I heard something the other day, right? When you go to a theme park or to a place with your parents, you always have that mom or dad that is standing on Facebook. And they're taking pictures. And let me take a picture of you. Let me take a video of you. You know, being like. Annoyed. Annoyed. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. But then it's sad, right? Because it's their first time doing that. Yeah. You don't realize that until you're in the moment. 
You're like, damn, I'm being an ass. Like, I'm over here like, why is your phone out? Yeah. <laughs> Live but in it's the their moment. First, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's their first time. Yeah. They're living their childhood for the first time. Yeah. You go to Disneyland, right? I don't have one. Yeah. Like, bro, just to, uh, man, that's crazy. Understanding now when our my dad took us all to Disneyland or when he took us to Sacramento to Six Flags, like when he took us on trips, I didn't, I didn't know that he worked a whole year for that two-day weekend. And all you saw was that he wasn't there. Yeah, all I saw was, oh, shit, we're out here having fun. Oh, this was needed. But now understanding is like, yo, I may be gone for the whole week. Cause, and I may see you only at nighttime. Or I may see you only to say good night or good morning. But, hey, I got this. Right? Nice. Because I, I've said it before. And when you have your first child... Your first child is the one that goes through every growing pain with you. Oh, my God. They're, they see the beginning stages of being a parent. They see the middle stages. They see your mistakes. They see your triumphs. They may get the repercussions of what you had to go through growing up, but that's your best friend. Oh, sometimes you favor your first child. Well, like <laughs> I went through everything with that person, with that little man, that little girl. I went through every little thing with them. So I owe them and I owe them to be the best version of me because what they did for me in my life, you can't put a price on it because I'm here because of them. And I, and I've talked about it with my son and I said it before. It's like, yo, because of that little man that was born, I found purpose in my life and I had to, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm used to having a lot of people around or being out and this, I need to, I need to find something for him. Because I need to give him something. I need to. I want, When he grows up, and maybe for you too, when my kid grows up, I want my kid to strive for his dreams because he saw his dad go for his dreams. So when they're like, oh, dude, you had this mindset. Bro, I started a business and I started a journey, my dream, in the middle of being a dad. Who's going to do that, right? They're going to stay home, work a nine to five, be there for your family. No le faltes. Well, yeah, I understand that, but. This is life. It's not linear. You know, I'm not going to be that 40, 50-year-old person and be like, I always wanted to be that. You ask your teacher, teacher, what did you want? Well, I, I wanted to be this, 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 but I got this. So you settled? Yeah. So you want to talk about me chasing my dreams, but you settled? Right. So, again, now I think, uh, what do they call it? We're the woke culture. Like, we understand a lot more than, and even our little kids, they understand a lot more than what we used to. But it's, you know, since our parents weren't, they were able to talk about feelings, emotions, and really live that, their best childhood. Yeah. Well, shit, we have that opportunity to do it. But that's a privilege. That's why I say, like, even you, you're privileged to mm -hmm. be able to say, I, I'm going for my dream or mm -hmm. not the nine to five. Our parents didn't have that option. They had no option. They had no options. They did their what they could to get us here. Yeah. And then we're going to have to try to buy a house and <laughs> try to all the struggles that we have to go through. So our children will reap the benefits of their grandparents and us yeah. um, to be able to say, I want to be an artist on Venice Beach. And I'm going to and si Dios quiere, ellos van a poder hacer, right? It happens without having the stress yeah. of que vamos a comer, la renta, I need a house, I need, you know. Um, and so that's what I'm working for. Yeah. You know, when you mentioned the firstborn, I've apologized. I, I, whoever's watching, if you have your children and you have yet to apologize to your children, I want to encourage you to exercise that. Sit your kids down and apologize to them. I'm sorry. Because if you never heard an I'm sorry from your parents, which I, I hardly have, um, it's nice. It's nice when someone looks you in the eyes and says, I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I missed this event. I'm sorry I wasn't there. I've done it to my son. I'm sorry that I whooped your ass when you wrote on the wall when you were like five <laughs> years old. Because now if my son, the five-year-old does it, yeah. I'm not going to whoop his ass. I'm older now. I'm wiser yeah. now. And I know that he's a little kid and here's the magic eraser. Go erase it. We don't write on walls, blah, blah, blah. But back then, I was working the overnight shift. You know what I mean? The stress of life. I was a single mom. I woke up and he had written all over the wall. You're taking and out your frustrations yeah. on him. On him. When it wasn't the wall it writing wasn't, that he did. It no. was everything that you it were going through in the everything. moment. Everything. Yeah. So I've had to apologize to him. Even for that, that happened 
13, you know, yeah. what, seven years, eight years ago? Is it, you think also because that when we made a mistake, los chingaban también? Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, what, what do we say? Si yo salí bien, right. así debe de ser. Right. Right? I, I think, yeah, but, but back then yo decía, like, you know, I have to be, and firm, I was more strong, firm and strong yeah. with the, my first one. Even yeah. bien cambiadito siempre lo traía, que no se vaya a ensuciar. Que no vaya a comer algo and sí. get chocolate on him. His shoes were always, he was wearing yeah. Jordans. And he was three years old with Air Force, bien limpiecitos. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And now when my five-year-old walks in, he's wearing shoes de la Target, del Spider-Man that light up, a t-shirt, <laughs> todo chorreado. Because I'm letting him be. <laughs> a yeah. kid. A kid. Yeah. And I think that you learn instead of trying to be, oh, sure. you know, with my first one. I was like, he's one already. He can't drink bottle. Y le quité el biberón. And now I look back and I'm like, what a bitch. Yeah. Even like... <laughs> pobrecito, pobrecito. Or, Toma, here you go again. Or, oh, he's crying. You know, when they're like, oh, está llorando. Let them yeah, soothe yeah. themselves. Yeah. And I remember like sitting there and my kid was crying at one. And I'm like, he'll go back to sleep. He'll soothe himself. My second one cries. I'm going to go grab him. Yeah, it's true. Because I don't he, have my kids, but my nieces and nephews, I'll see them cry. Oh, hell no. You, the mom made you cry? I'm like, Elizabeth, go tell your child something. <laughs> Let me, and she'll be like, no. Se van a contentar solos. I'm like, you're such a bitch. And then I'll go up and be like, come here. You want a hug? <laughs> no, leave me alone. I hate you. Oh, Give me a hug. Dogs. Yeah. And you give them that hug. You say, yeah. calma. That's calma. all they need sometimes. That's all they need. But I was, I read the books. I was, I get it. I'm going to be this. No sippy cup because it's bad for his teeth. Deja que coma tierra. Déjalo. You yeah, know what like I mean? You're like, going to let your kids eat my... Yes. Sí, güey, ¿qué? <laughs> Let him drink from the water hose. Yeah. Yeah, hey, look at me, fool. I turned out really good. We didn't, didn't have fil system. We didn't have filter water before. <laughs> Parenting is definitely a journey. Yeah. You're not perfect at it. You're never going to be. You're going to continue to grow. I tell him all the time, I'm sorry. I've never had a 13-year-old before. I'm sorry. I've never had a 12-year-old before. So every new, every experience is going to be new with him. Yeah. And if I make a mistake in the way, porque todo lo nuevo... Se, hace, se, se, se cometen errores. Yeah. You know, todo lo nuevo uno le aprende. Yeah. So if you see me doing better with your brother, it's because I learned because of you. Yeah. And I'm sorry. But I'm thankful. But I'm thankful for sure. Yeah. So that video of this Bryant, uh, I'm going to butcher it, but just the, one of the parts that he has said at the end, and I think just it hit me very much. And I, come, I started to even implement that now. And he had said, for your kids, be their inner voice, not their inner critic. Mm. You can't expect them to have a good day when you just yell at them in the in the morning. How old is your son? Uh, he's about to be four next week. Oh, well, good luck. I got two 13-year-olds. You know what mornings are like with those two mother... <laughs> Great. Put your shoes on! Oh, my God. <laughs> I tried a gentle parent. You yeah. know that video like, oh, how do you want them to have a good day? Yeah. But, oh, my God. <laughs> Put your shoes on. We got to go. We're running late. Let's go. Are your go. shoes on? No. <laughs> 20 minutes later. Are your shoes on? Oh, my no. gosh. And then you tell us something. Like, uh, I think my little sister, she is 10, going on 11 soon. And you tell us, hey, dude, what are you? Well, you did it. I'm like. The sass. I'm like, hold up. And I'm <laughs> like, wait. I was like, I'm, I'm forgetting. I'm your brother. I'm not your dad. <laughs> but, again, like, the way they parents her. And I, That's hard. The way you just said it explained it perfectly. Me and my older sister went through all the growing pains with my parents. So when we see the parenting with my little sister, I'm like, you spoiled son of a gun. You would have oh, whooped I'm me. Like, I'm like, yeah. as soon as my dad heard my mom yelling at us, que hicieron? Yeah. <laughs> Taking off his belt, we're like, no, dude, no. But so now he walks home without the belt. Yeah, like I, I think I've heard my dad say, like, uh, he's like, Doy. Es niña, es, estoy esa chiquita, está aprendiendo. I'm like, this girl taller than me, bro. What are you talking about? She's taller than you, yeah. first and foremost. But like, she knows it and knows it so well. But yeah. you know, again, parenting. There's a lot of parenting books out there. There's a lot of uh, resources. But your best teacher in life is your own experiences. Yeah, we've yeah. never, we never been parents until now. Yeah, and you always want to try to be better. Yeah. Just try to be better and one, be open. And one little step. One yeah. step at a time, not 10 steps, not not try to, you know, you're always, when you are be, when you become a parent, you get everybody's opinion and voice of what they did and what didn't work and what works. And 
you try what you know and what you feel is best for you and your kids. Yeah. No, if they don't agree with it, hey, it's okay. That is your decision for your kid, right? When are you going to have a baby? I don't know. I need a baby mama first. You know, no, <laughs> no, no. A wife? A wife. Yes, a wife. Thank you. A wife? <laughs> So this is my boy. A baby mama will do though. Wait, I want a child. Son dos cosas bien diferentes. You need to be careful. Either you one will do right now. Careful. No, one. no, be no, careful. We have a, on the podcast. Shout out to Palakaye Podcast. We always say be careful because <laughs> we're really good at manifesting things. Like todo lo que baby se mama. dice pasa. A. Hey. Jeez. You gotta What's be up? careful. You gotta What's be careful. Up? You don't want one of them. Well, it depends. Shout out to all the good baby mamas. Porque somos muy pocas que estamos ahí que somos buenas. <laughs> like, let me toot my own horn. <laughs> Pero hay unas intensas, güey. Cuidado. Okay. You want a wife. You want a family. I want a family. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You want We're a baby. 20, 20 How old are you? I'm old. How old are you? No, I'm Wait, 34. no se pregunta? No, sí se pregunta. I'm oh, 34. Okay. Oh, you're young. You're good. I still got a couple Two more years. years. Two more years. Two more years, and then you got to settle down. I got to settle down. I think so. Two more years, yeah. Yeah, 36. About 36, have a child 37, yeah. but have money and be able to spend sí, time. You know, right. make sí, that sí, time sí. count. Así no estás estresado, exactly. but you'll still be like a young dad. Yeah, I think. Young ish. By 36, you'll mature. You'll be a deal, my boy. Not that you're not mature <laughs> now. You'll be a deal. You'll be a deal. The deal. Hey, there's something about good dads, though. I'm telling you. Just, just, hey, just take your nieces and nephews to the store for me. Like, oh my, my no. kid. Yeah. I know. I make sure. I'm, you, but you gotta make sure <laughs> that they say uncle. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It, there is. is that I, it, there's two girls out here. But can we just? Isn't there something about a committed married man that makes him more attractive? Not that you want to sleep with the guy, but you're just like, oh, you're a good dad. Oh, you automatically oh. became a. Solid six, and then oh, I'm I'm a good I'm, I'm a good six. husband. Oh, okay, a seven, a eight, okay. And it has nothing to do with the way you look. It's just there's so few of them that oh contaditos, you know that when you see yeah. one, you're like un aplauso. <laughs> un aplauso. <laughs> you know it, it's it's crazy when when looking back like the memories right like now TikTok gives you the memories, Snapchat gives you the memories, and just looking back of the journey and embracing the journey like again kind of summing everything up that we're talking about right now to believe that we would be here be this person right now compared to who was that person a year ago two years ago wouldn't have believed it wouldn't have never believed it well you had to believe it to be here you would have never got here if you didn't believe it what is it having faith right i think having some sort of faith believing in something that's not physically there or tangible yeah it has to be like again i'm really big on like manifesting and stuff and like your image and your story yeah you have to have believed this inside of you you were yeah. like this is what i want this is what i believe in porque si no no hubiera pasado si no no estuvieras aquí si no no hubieras prioritize what you needed to prioritize and do what you needed to do yeah. you had the vision maybe people didn't have it for you yeah. but you had it for yourself i'm Sh- sure shout you out had it for us yeah shout out to chris because i think he he told us something one of the, last year when San Diego and he was like, if if God would tell you every this is what you're gonna have, but this is everything you gotta go through, do you still want it? Do you still want this position that you're gonna be in right now, happy, fulfilled? You gotta go through all this pain, all this trauma, all this struggle. Are you still gonna want that end result, or should you rather just not know and go through it yourself? Mm-hmm. And if you give me that, I'll do it. 10 times over again because I know who the person that I am now and I'm proud of this person. I'm proud of the person I became. I'm proud of the person I'm growing to be because I know where we're headed and I know now in the position where we're in mentally, physically, and emotionally, it's like anything that happens, it's okay. God got me. Yeah. No worries. Ah, oh, dude, but this, it's all right, bro. It, it's not my, it, it's not my job to have seek revenge on somebody or something God has it, not me. You know, it's something, more, something more powerful than than us, than me. It's always gonna be him. But it took me a while to get there. The power of letting go. Yes, that surrendering. Yeah. You know, a lot. I think a lot of people grow up hating the idea because it's the why me, and we self inflict all of our traumas and opportunities and and low moments. We self inflict them because we had a bad day, a 
a bad moment or a bad week. Let's be honest. Some, a bad year. A bad year. A bad couple life. Years. <laughs> yeah. But the one thing that's overlooked and people don't talk about it is, did you wake up? Mm-hmm. Were you able to walk? Were you able to breathe? Were you able to see? Were you able to feel? People always focus on the why me, not yeah. the why not me. Yeah. Or right. thank you for letting me do this. Exactly. Right. You may have you may have a s- shitty situation. It may be tough. We all do. You know, but are you breathing right now? Can you talk to me? Can you talk to someone? Can you see? Can you walk? Can you talk? Oh, you have all that? Man, you're blessed. I've, I've even with my high school kids, I've always said this, like, what about those b- infants, the babies, the one-year-olds, the two, ten-year-olds, even the grown adults that had to grow up with without an arm, without sight, being, like, imagine their life, but yet we're here complaining, yet we have all all this? Nah, we're, why are we complaining? You know, we have, we have every, right now you have every opportunity to change your life. Right. You don't like your job, change it. You don't like your relationship, let them go. You don't like how you look, change it. Go to the gym, do something. But if you're going to sit there and complain every day and complain to your friends and your family about why you, it's going to be a long year. I mean, it's hard though. It's hard. We're on the other side, so yeah. it's easy okay, for so us. Okay, so give us, please give us your, if I come to you for advice and I'm telling you all my all my trauma and I'm like, I can't, I want to quit. I can't get up no more. I, I'm done. I've gone through A, B, and C. God doesn't love me. The world hates me. I want to quit. Take your ass to therapy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> get choose a life coach go to therapy you can't fix anything when you don't love yourself and you have that doom and gloom um but again that's a privilege yeah. and i don't i know that it's really harsh when when I, or maybe i'm very uh self-conscious about that right like get a new job leave the person you're with that that's us speaking from privilege yeah because you can get up and get a new job, and then you're also strong enough to aguantar hambre, to quizá no tener carro. Ahorita me la averiguo. That is a power. Mm. Not everybody has that superpower. Mm. And so when you talk to everyone like that and you say, get up, quit the job, leave the man you're with, he beats you, déjalo. He ain't worth it. He ain't worth it. That's me speaking from my privilege and my power from within. Yeah. And you know, everything that I've been through. And so I've learned that people have their own journey. And when, let's say, you do come to me, you're like, mi esposo me pega, which I've had. He cheats on me, me pega, he's toxic. Um, They're in this, this, like, really crazy cycle. And I'm like, okay, but where are you at? Where are you? What part of that journey are you at? No, pero es que lo quiero. I can't <laughs> leave. I can't. Yeah. I'm like, then you need help. You need to find that power from within. You need to find your super, because we all have it. But the fact that you have it, así al chingazo, y dices, no, eso, you guys, you know what? This isn't working. No la vamos a averiguar. Yeah. Oh, the audio for the show wasn't here. We're meeting up again, and we're going to yeah, shoot we're it, and we're going to. Yeah. That's a superpower that not everybody has. Your light. And wherever you go, you shine really, you shine bright. But not everybody's ready for your 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 light. So, do you think you have a responsibility to sh- shed your light on the other people that have it dim? You know, I'm really again, I'm really self conscious about it. I try to, but I also I feel like I'm very aware of it hmm. because sometimes your light is too bright. Yeah. Sometimes you can give me all of the advice, and I'm still gonna walk out of here hating you. You're too nice. What do you mean to leave my house? Oh, tú puedes. ¿Cómo que deje mi trabajo y no darles de comer a mis hijos? Easy for you to say. Easy for, for you, you to say. say. You got money. Yeah. You're doing this. Easy for you oh, to say. People help you. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't easy. Yo le batallé. Tú también le batallé. Y si tú lo ha- o sea, cualquiera. But I went through it y gracias a Dios, I came out on the other side. So when people do, which I do a lot, come to me and tell me their problems or what's happening. I just basically listen. Mm. And if they want my advice, I I give it to them. And my advice is always seek help 
whether it's therapy, whether it's a life coach, whether it's dress in the gym, yeah. go to a seminar, go so you can find your power. Because I can't give you por más luz que yo te dé, yeah. if you're in a dark place, it's not going to work. Es porque, como se dice, it's um, way, how you recovered from your traumas and your hurt isn't the same way I'm going to recover, mm -mm. right? Some of the, some of us do need the, dude, get your fucking ass up already. And then some of them, it's like, hey, it's okay. Yeah. Take your time. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, for real. Like, there's, it, everybody, the way everybody receives a message is very different. different. That's why you have the motivational speakers that speak to your soul, give you all their trauma, and you're like, fuck, I've been through I, I could do that shit. And then you have the other motivational speakers that are, hey, how are you doing? Why do you softer, feel that way? A little, little bit, bit softer. Kinder. Yes. But again, everybody has a, their own way, and it's okay. So when I love how we said at the beginning, we love podcasting because you can speak about whatever. Anything. Say anything. Say however you want it. Say how you feel. And if it's not for you, bye. Bye. Like, Adios. bye. But um, to me, it's just hard because I used to be like that. Yeah. Like, I have a friend who's in a very toxic relationship. And so it's been like a roller coaster. I removed myself from that situation because I'm, I can't take that. I can't even. And then I'm like, well, how good of a friend am I? Just leave them. If I just leave her there. But I don't want to fucking be in there with her. <laughs> so now I've, I've realized how to navigate that situation. And when she needs me to listen, I listen. Yeah. When she needs advice, I give advice. And every chance I get when they, I am asked, you know, I try to praise. You're not worth this. You're worth so much more. There's so much out there for you. There's happiness yeah. on the other side of this. You're, it's, you still have time. If you think you don't have time, if you, es mejor estar sola que mal acompañada. Leave. Tú no tienes que estar ahí. No tienes que estar donde no te quieren, donde no te aprecian, donde no te aplauden. That goes for family, that goes for relationships, that goes for work, that goes for everything. Mm. But then <laughs> she leaves and then she comes back two months later and it's the same thing and the same thing. And again, it comes that not everybody has my superpower of being like, me voy. Gone. I'm gone. Not coming back. Yeah. Not everybody has that. And so I just learned to like, listen, be there. Give advice when it's asked, and you know, on our podcast, that you we're very we're very privileged, we're very lucky, and it's kind of fucked up to say that because you're like, I worked for my shit, I'm not lucky. Yo leche ganas, but not everybody is or has what we have. Las ganas and eso, los huevos. Yeah, that that's shout out my dad, bro. But it's like his business, his company is like. Yo tengo esto por mis huevos. Es porque yo le eché ganas. Nadie me echó la mano, nadie me quiso ayudar, nadie creyó en mí. Yo lo hice. You believe in himself. Yeah, so, oh, bro, you have it made. You have your dad's business. He's going to pass it down. That's not mine. That's his. Why? Él sufrió eso. No, que te lo deje. ¿Cómo que no te lo va a dar? <laughs> Then, what's your dad's name? Make your life easier <laughs> wait, for wait. you. José Luis. Don José Luis, por favor, reaccione. <laughs> Aquí tenemos quien maneje el business. Of course, we'll keep doing this because this is our we, this is what we love. Yeah. But, oh, no, 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 he, no, he, no it's never heard. he asked me. He was like, "Oh, he's like, pues aquí está el negocio. Te deja bien." I was like, "I know it does." I was like, "Pero yo también quiero aprender." Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. I need to because hey, you taught me all of this. You taught me to work hard. You taught me to build something. You taught me how to get up every day. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to figure out mine. So now you can be proud that your son works with you, but you can also be proud that, hey, your son did something else. That I, I just always hated the judgment and the, ah, oh, bro, your dad, you were for your dad? That's easy. I'm like, have you argued with my dad? <laughs> I was like, I call HR. <laughs> my mom doesn't want to help me. Yeah. Like, what is your, what's your dad's company? Uh, Pest Control. We That's kill awesome. bucks for a living. Shout out JLV Pest Control hey, for our sponsor all year. Applauso. You know, shout out to, <laughs> shout out to him. No, I mean, ese es el sueño de todos los papás yeah. to set up your children. Yeah. And I mean, you're a business owner now and you know marketing and social media. And so it's like, 
to have that business for your dad y el día que Dios no quiera y no esté tu papá, el business continúa y ahora tienes otro and the goal is tener muchos streams of income. Everybody hired here. Eh, mucho, because that's the goal, right? To leave our kids set up. I, yeah. I hate that. Um, what is it called? The Nepo Babies? I'm is that a thing? Yeah, Nepo Babies. Fuck yeah. Fuck you know what? yeah. <laughs> you can't even be mad at the Nepo I'm Babies, not. right? Because it's like, shit, if I could have been a Nepo Baby. My I kids are Nepo Babies. Nepo Baby. 100%. Yes, so like, chingon. Like, my parents couldn't. Yeah. It's like they, my parents busted. It, it would be an honor. Yes. It would be like my dad and my mom busted yeah. their ass off. So I can have this, this, and this. I mean, obviously, it'd be different if I don't do shit with that, right? Right. But if I can take that little advantage that they gave me and make my kids Nepo babies? Yeah. Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, these people started at the finish line. That's right. So. They started at the finish line, so we're never going to catch up. And so the fact that your dad already set something up for you, y el día que no esté, you keep that going, you hire people. Even if you're not working in the business, I think yeah. now that we're business owners, we know it's not working in the business, it's working on the business. Right. Yeah. You hire someone to do the labor your dad did. Yeah. You hire a manager. You, have, you don't even have to be in there. You don't have to be killing bugs. Want the trucha and then, you know, make more money marketing. Now you have this. It's and so that's my goal too for my kids. I I bought properties. We have a juice company. Um, you know, my me being in the entertainment industry, my kids are now doing commercials and they you know hey. payment some cash because <laughs> private school ain't paying for itself that's no. right i think we talked about that at the tacos remember you had like a whole oh, he went interview. we finally yeah. went yeah, we went okay to go there see we go the school and he's finally feeling like okay i guess he's gonna okay, okay. go and i'm excited i can't wait wait to wear that letterman jacket <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. i saw all the seniors walking around with the he's letterman like, jacket hey. with the d i yeah. was like Fuck yeah. You're going to buy two two Letterman's, one for your son, one for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm a proud mom and I'm all for it. Pa yeah. eso estamos. And I think our whole being Latinos of being thankful yeah. sometimes no nos deja, you know? Like, te dices tú, like, oh, everyone's like, oh, your parents, fuck yeah. yeah. Your parents didn't? I'm sorry, bro. Que pena. Yeah. Sí. I'm, that's, I'm sorry. My parents didn't. No me dejaron casa, no, you know, pero yeah. I'm doing it for my kids, so. We're not our past. We're not our past. Shout out but, to all the Nepo babies. Yeah. Do you have a quote that you live by? We're big. We're very big on quotes or something that, like, yeah. kind of resen resonated with you, something that's helped you. Um, When I was at my lowest, I was at a store. I don't know where the hell I was at. And, um. Why was I at a store? Good question. I don't know. I didn't have money. <laughs> Pero I was there, and I remember I saw a bracelet, and in the bracelet it said, I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love although I am alone, and I believe in God even when he is silent. And I, I remember, and I took that with me, and then I searched it up, And it was a quote that was picked up from one of the survivors or in a book or written in a wall from the Holocaust. Wow. So these people who estaban muriéndose by the bunches, tenían nada. Yeah. All they had was their faith, wrote that. Yeah. Crazy. And here I was crying over a guy that left me over sleeping in my mom's couch over not having money over whatever situation was happening to me. And I was just like, and I got it tattooed on my, on my side. Perdón por la lonja, pero aquí está. And so <laughs> I remember I got it tattooed and I was just like, that's the quote that I lived by. Wow. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. I believe in love, although I'm alone. And I believe in God, even when he is silent, I never lose faith. Damn. How do you follow up, dog? You don't. I don't <laughs> end with that. <laughs> end, with, end with that. That's the podcast. Man, that's so beautiful. That is for sure. That's a clip that's going viral. That's so uh, no, pero echenle ganas, muchachos. Thank you so much thank for you. having thank me you for and listening, me, listening to me rant. And um, to everybody watching, you know. I understand that it is a privilege that we're here. We don't take it lightly. 
Um, we're very privileged. We're very blessed. Y le echamos ganas. And if you can take anything from this podcast from these two guys is échale huevos. Don't get stuck in your victim mentality. I know that it's hard and just work on yourself. Don't take anything personal at all and just grow within yourself because if you're all right then everything else around you will be all right a lot of times we look at everything else we're like well this isn't right well that's not right well this it's because you're not right figure that shit out Buena yeah. Suerte. you had a quote right there Pip? not after that <laughs> not after that quote you got a quote do you want to read mine <laughs> let me read it in espanol no i can say one yeah yeah the person you are becoming is more important than the person you have been Man, I, get that tattoo on, your, on, your, on, your on the rib. On the rib. I'm not showing the long high, y'all. <laughs> Let me tell you, I I was like, where is the where can I get this tatted? That is the most painful place. That's how I Oof. fucking walked into the tattoo <laughs> shop like a pendeja. <laughs> They're like in your rib or in your spine. Like those are the places where your bone is at. Y yeah. que duele más. Pónganmelo aquí. I want to feel pain. I want to feel real pain. Here I am crying over dumb shit. Pain, physical pain. I was there. I was like, oh, I'm never getting a tattoo again. <laughs> First and last. Uh, man, this quote just came. It came from actually our San Diego trip. Shout out to my boy, Myron. I don't want to be more than I am. I just want to be all that I am. That's it. I don't want, I don't want a penny more. I don't want a penny less. I would just want what's mine. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys. Joining us on thank a Saturday morning. Toast to Life podcast. Most authentic, most organic. Pa la casa los vamos. Pa la calle no, los vamos. No, 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 pa no. Make sure to go follow Pa la Calle Podcast, <laughs> yes, the organic juice dude, which is my uh, juice delivery, and me, Wait, 3 to get, 7 on Cali 93.9. Can you end it on a commercial for your juice? Oh, see. Oh, Give right. yourself your promo right here. You, you got to sell it right here. Are you trying to lose weight? <laughs> Are you trying to lose weight? She you, looked at me. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. Pero es que te lo tienes que tomar, güey. Si no, no va a funcionar. <laughs> but I am, but I am. To answer your question. Yeah, yeah. Jose, you Jose like, don't say a word, Jose. Do not say a word, Jose. Jose is offering he's a, a He's a personal so. trainer, so. Are you, Jose? Yeah. Let me see your abs. Look at those thighs. Let, let me see your shoulders. Look, look he, it's because it's he knew girls were coming today, so he didn't want to wear his three-quarter shorts today. Yeah, he didn't want to be distracted. Yeah, usually when it's us guys, you just wear the shortest shorts. We're like, bro, what's So Jose's going on? discipline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're, we go out to a restaurant to go eat. He's like, nah, I got my meal prep. He's like, I'm going to get breakfast. I'll just meet you guys in the car. Oh, my God. And he's just sitting right there with his meal prep. I'm like, fool, that looks triste, but let me have some. <laughs> I aspire 2024. I'm gonna become a gym girly. I got my trainer too, self made. They've been awesome. I have a. I'm really trying to. You want to lift 500 pounds? Go to my boy. Lo recojo. Okay. Oh, did yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. I. I'm really trying. You want to pick up your car? He can get you there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The commercial. Here we go. Commercial. You can do your commercial with your juice. Oh, I thought you guys were inserting a sponsor, bro. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Who's the sponsor? Oh, sponsor. Shout out to our sponsor, the Organic Juice Dude. El día de hoy trajo jugos. You need to do a cleanse if you're trying to get healthy. Uh, my stepson had uh, cancer when he was three months. And part of his detox journey and healing journey was drinking a green juice every day. And that's how he beat his cancer. He's now 13 years old. He is cancer free. He is one of the most athletic and healthiest boys that I know. And his journey inspired myself and my husband to understand that health is wealth. Because all of this is nothing if we're not healthy enough to live it and to be it. Go get your organic juice, dude. God damn. <laughs> you can't follow up. You got to <laughs> drink it, bro. Yeah. Drink it off. <laughs>